your public health professional and you coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Public Health Association. For one, we have a new website. And this gives us an opportunity to let our members and members of the public like yourself learn more about the organization. So it's mdpha.org, but we have put up a user-friendly website where you can go and learn more about who we are, learn about public health itself, learn about advocacy, the events we are hosting out in the community, and how you can join us. Very important. We're also going to be sharing, guess what, public health news, and you can read our bi-weekly updates also on the website. And that is one of the things that's going on. But beyond that, guess what we have again? We have an annual event coming up on December 1st. During our annual event, our keynote speaker will be Dr. Wendy Ellis. She is with GW University, and we will be honoring U.S. Representative Jimmy Raskin. No need to tell you about Jimmy Raskin, right? Well, if you want to find out more, come and join our event. And it is that time of the year. When I say it's that time of the year, what do I mean? It's a time when we're calling out for nominations. You can join the MDPHA board. Of course, you have to be a member of the Maryland Public Health Association first, right? And we will also be giving out our words. People who are working out in the community, people like you, making Maryland safe for everybody. We are continuing our conversations about your public health professional and you because we are getting to meet public health professionals here in the state of Maryland. And today, our guest is no other person than Yale Friedman. Yale, welcome to your public health professional and you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be able to represent a wonderful organization as the MDPHA. Great. Well, we're talking to you because you're a public health practitioner. So tell us, what do you do and how does that constitute public health? Yes, for me, I've been in academia now for seven years, approximately, and to collaborate with professionals from various fields, both in healthcare and in the public health sector, is such an honor to learn from them. I'm always learning something new each day. And um, through this experience in academia, I've had the opportunity to work through various projects and practicums, such as for oral health. I'm very interested in that since I've been very young, actually. I have had the opportunity to contribute for a Mission of Mercy community-based dental care clinic back in undergrad, um, where we provided free dental care services to individuals in the community who are underserved and would otherwise have to go without. Um, more recently, I've gained interest in the infectious disease sector, and I had the opportunity to explore areas of MRSA prevention or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus prevention within acute care facilities and understand what are the recommended strategies through the published literature and through the experts who have been in this field for many years now. Awesome. That's a lot. And there's so many key things that were coming out as you were talking. One of the things you said was free. One of the things you said was underserved. And one of the things you said that piqued my interest was prevention. So tell us, how does the average person on the street benefit from free services and from prevention services from public health practitioners? Yes. Well, with prevention, we think of that as a key aspect of public health. And at the end of the day, if we're capable of implementing preventative services and making that more accessible, then we can reduce our burden of disease nationwide. It's not always available, though. There are limitations to what is available on the population. And we often go to clinical treatment when disease actually occurs. But if we start taking a focus that leads more towards a preventative measure, then we can see those reductions occur within health and healthcare. We won't need to have as much treatment and we'll be able to have more affordable 
health outcomes as well, because those treatments are very expensive and not everyone has, has access to health insurance, unfortunately. But if we implement prevention on the streets, in the neighborhoods, if we ab advocate for community engagement to know what is needed within each individual community, then we can tailor prevention for all those individuals and their individual needs and ultimately reach health equity. Ultimately, health equity. So this is you talking about not waiting until people know that they have the need and not waiting until people can afford it, but taking the services, going to them and offering them free. Yes. Absolutely awesome. And you also said that you've been in academia. And so how does academia help public health? You know, the average person on the street is like, uh, I don't know what they do in the ivory tower, th those people. Is it really those people or do those people have something to do with the regular person on the street? I think that we each come from different backgrounds in academia and in our personal lives. And I think that that helps us to better understand communities. And in terms of the academic aspect, we are here to train young and professionals of all ages, actually, to make a difference within the field, to make a difference within the community, to be an advocate and to speak on behalf of those who need that extra support and need the, the advocacy of those who are very knowledgeable of what's going on at the policy level, what is going on with programs these days, and how we should best proceed in striving to increase access to health care and prevention. That is a public health theme. Sorry if you're hearing some of this, but this is very public health, right? Health equity, access to health care. Those are the things that public health is concerned about. And when you talk about training, I wanted to find out some more about your training. How did you get to public health? How did you decide this is what I want to train in? Yes, about, let's see, it was about 15 years ago. Um, there was, a, unfortunately, a case in the state of Maryland. There was a young boy named Diamante Driver who, unfortunately, lost his life to a dental abscess um, as a result of um, inadequate access to dental care. Um, there were many issues surrounding um, health insurance, surrounding um, uh, income of his family, and, unfortunately, the situation got to a fatal case. And I heard about this case. It actually happened around my 10th birthday. And it's, it's so interesting to think that while we're all minding our own business each day, I'm blowing out the birthday candles on my 10th birthday. Someone does not have access to a basic need. And for me, hearing about that story at such a young age, a 12-year-old boy losing his life to something that should have been prevented, it inspired me to say, I want to make changes I want to be an advocate. I want to support those who need access and who need more resources. And through that, that began my journey into the public health field once I approached the undergraduate level. And the rest has been, it's hard to believe it's been almost a decade now, but I'm enjoying every moment of what I do to help those who need help. Awesome. Did you hear, I mean, I'm like, just so fascinated, right? He's turning 10. He's listening to the news. Something is happening in his community. A young boy lost his life, lack of access to dental health care, insurance, income, and all of those things have contributed to him and his thinking, I can go into public health. I can do something about this. I can prevent something like this from happening to another person. Where are you in your life? What are you listening to? Public health for you? Think about it and listen and find out. And how was the path? So how did you get here? Did you have to um, take certain classes? Is this something that anybody can do? Or do you have to be like, you know, gifted, you, public health tattooed on your shoulder or something, or just regular? I think that anyone can get involved in public health. It can be a community leader who knows the community very well. Anyone who wants to be an advocate to help out. And, and through my previous experience, oftentimes it is community members who wish to help with public health efforts to really engage and spread awareness of public health prevention services and how to expand our knowledge on public health issues. And especially during times of the COVID-19 pandemic, how can we engage our friends and our family? How can we engage the people that we walk past every day 
we can come from a variety of disciplines and backgrounds, but at the end of the day, we all want to help each other and we all want to, again, strive for equity. So try for equity, help each other. You're thinking public health and you might think, oh, oral health is, the, you know, something else is medical health. But really, there's a component of public health in oral health because then not just the dentist sitting in the office and just waiting for people to come, but really thinking about people's income, people access the dental services, and you have all of this knowledge, but it really makes a difference when you can help people regardless of the level that they are in. Now, yeah, you're a member of the Maryland Public Health Association. Tell us about that. When did you join and how have you found belonging to this organization useful to your profession? Yes, I found out about the MDPHA several years back. I've been a member now since 2020, so it's been a little bit more than two years now. I think that expanding from academia, this organization has professionals from a variety of disciplines who at the end of the day, and I, I, I strive for equity all the time, we have this in common, all of us, regardless of our backgrounds, we all want to promote equity because we want to make sure that everyone has access, everyone has what they need, and that goes beyond just a simple intervention. It, it involves tailoring intervention so that it meets what is needed within each individual community. And that is not easy. It's not something that can happen overnight, health equity, but it is where we need to be moving into the future of public health. And I, I see that this is what is offered within the MDPHA. It is their mission and its members are aligning with that mission to bring us into the future of this field. Great. So um, I, I'm going to ask you, you know, three quick questions as we're rounding up. Um, I want you to talk to three things. One, to anybody who's out there and who's thinking, I don't know what public health is. You know, I don't know what they do. You know, what would you say to somebody like that? Like, what is public health? What do they do? And why is it useful? I think that during these times of the pandemic with COVID-19, we're living through public health efforts. We see the increase in vaccinations. We see the social distancing and the methods for prevention to prevent disease onset. We may not need a term for that, but we see it's happening. We see that this is what is needed to increase life expectancy during a time when, unfortunately, a very fatal disease has emerged upon us at a global level. It's not easy to control. It's not easy to spread awareness of. It's a very complex issue. But the education and the engagement is what public health is all about. And we're seeing it firsthand. That's what it's all about. And it's something that anyone can learn to be involved with, regardless of your background, professionally or academically. Awesome. Anybody can be involved in public health. You may have started your career already. You may want to try something new. People are reinventing themselves all of the time. There's room for you in public health. So come on on or we're ready to welcome you. And then I wanted you to give a message to our public health professionals, those people who are already in the field, and maybe they're students in schools. We have so many public health schools around Maryland, we have so many public health institutions around the DMV area, but they are not members of the MDPH. What do you say to a public health professional who's around here and who's not a member of MDPH yet? There is, are so many opportunities within the MDPHA to network and to engage with other members, again, who come from a variety of professional and academic backgrounds. For us public health professionals, we learn for the sake of learning, and it is incredible when you learn something new where you least expect it. And I must say, I have learned extraordinary things from my colleagues in the MDPHA, and it's invaluable. I am so grateful to have had this opportunity because it's, it's expanding my knowledge. It's bringing me into what is current within the field, and I think that it's going to make me an even better professional. Great. So you're doing a amazing work already, our dear public health practitioner. But joining MDPHA provides you opportunities to learn new things, to connect with other folks, to pursue your health equity agenda, to do your advocacy work. There are different com committees that you can belong to in MDPHA. 
you want to get in touch with us, remember what I said to you at the beginning, brand new website, easy to access, easy to navigate, mdpha.org. And if you have a message for us, you can reach us at getinfo at mdpha.org. Getinfo at mdpha.org with your questions, your comments. I am Lily Anagoyegwe, your friendly community health educator with another episode of Your Public Health Professional and You. The work that we do, we do it for you. We do it because of you. Yell, I'm going to ask you for any last words for our friends, either in MDPHA or anywhere that you want to give before you sign off. Thank you so much again for having me here. I must say that public health is a field that will make changes over time. And if we keep working together to make those changes in just a few years, we're going to be surprised how far we've come. It's amazing what we all can do together. And it's a teamwork process. Let's all work together to continue to strive for equity. That's a tweet right there. In just a few years, you'll be surprised at how far we have come. In just a few years. Remember, you heard it first on your public health professional and you, and you heard it first from Yale Friedman. In just a few years, you'll be surprised at how far we have come. I want to sign up, but I want to remind you that go on our website, our brand new website, our logo, by the way, is also fairly new. We just introduced it this year. And go and learn more about public health, about MDPHA, about joining us, and how we want to make sure that in just a few years, you'd be surprised at how far we have come. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Your Public Health Professional and You. I look forward to coming back to you sometime soon with another episode talking to another public health professional here in the state of Maryland. Until I come your way again, stay well.